Our worship theme for the summer is beauty. What easily comes to my mind, and maybe yours as well, are a variety of fanciful sights in nature, a clump of bright yellow daffodils in the spring woods, or a blue afternoon sky following a gray morning's heavy rains. As the worship committee discussed the subtleties of the word beauty, we moved beyond nature and acknowledged the beauty of community. The very act of coming together for a shared purpose, as we are right now, to worship together and a little later this morning to practice the UU principle affirming the democratic process within our congregation at today's annual meeting. The coming together in what Reverend Ashley Horan calls the holy work of showing up again and again to be part of building a world of which we dream, but which we have not yet seen. This past year, the board has performed that holy work of showing up and will come together this morning to assist with the reading of today's chalice lighting by Thomas Rhodes. Board members, please. We come in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Some of us grow in bunches. Some of us grow alone. Some of us are cupped inward. <laughs> and some of us spread ourselves out wide. Some of us are old and dried and tougher than we appear. <laughs> Some of us are still in bud. Some of us grow low to the ground. And some of us stretch towards the sun. Some of us feel like weeds sometimes. <laughs> some of us carry seeds sometimes. Some of us are prickly sometimes. Some of us smell. <laughs> and all of us are beautiful. What a bouquet of people we are. And the Dean family will light our chalice. Right. And a few words from the children's religious ed. This is the church of the open mind. This is the church of the helping hands. And this is the church of the loving heart. The first reading, Flowers, by Cynthia Zarin. This morning I was walking upstairs from the kitchen, carrying your beautiful flowers. The flowers you brought me last night, calla lilies, and something else. I'm not sure what to call them, white flowers. Of course you had no way of knowing it has been years since I bought white flowers. But now you have, and here they are again. I was carrying your flowers and a coffee cup and a soft yellow handbag and a book of poems by a Chinese poet in which I had just read the words, come or go, but don't just stand in the doorway. As usual, I was carrying too many things. You would have laughed if you saw me. 
It seemed especially important not to spill the coffee, as I usually do, as I turned up the stairs inside the whirl of the house as if I were walking inside the lilies. I do not know how to hold all the beauty and sorrow of my life. And Smell of the Sunshine by Tamara Madison. Ten daffodils stand in a pasta sauce jar, giving up their moment of spring to brighten this cluttered kitchen table. You lovelies, I am honored to have you here. Outside, you'd be just another bit of the great flowering world. But in my kitchen, I'm on the papers, the bottles, the bananas growing tired in the bowl. You are amazement itself. Outside, amid the orange blossoms, the roses, the sweet alyssum, your light scent would be lost. Here, you turn this morning kitchen into a festival of fragrance. You are the way sunshine smells. In my garden, if you picked a flower, the story goes, another one would pop right up in its place. Gardens are magical places. The earth is a mysterious, magical place of life and death and possibility of things that can grow and change, of people that can grow and change. Sometimes what you plant in a garden or what you put out into the world is what you intended. It comes back, exactly what you thought would come back. Other times, things you plant and what comes out seem very different or what you offer out into the world, or what impact you try to make in the world, you send one thing out and something very different returns. As a child, there used to be a tradition among some of my classmates at the end of the school year, we'd pick bouquets of dandelions for our teachers. There were mixed reviews about this. <laughs> I think our groundskeeper particularly liked this practice. And as we got older, I knew more about the debates between what was a plant, what was a flower, what was a weed, growing a little concerned that even experts disagree. It's a good life lesson. Kind of like not being sure about if a tomato is a vegetable or fruit, depending on if you're a botanist or a biologist or a nutritionist. And I know several of you will set me straight after the postlude. <laughs> But I remember my whole life noticing people going along on a path who would stop, either in the middle of the city or along a path in a forest, and they would take a look at the spring flowers and say, wow, would you look at that? And at least in my family, the next question was, what is it? And then most often, at least in my family, the answer was, I don't know. But my favorite thing about that mantra, that little litany of wonder, was that even when we got down to the I don't know, that phrase of humility was filled with amazement and wonder. What is that? I don't know. As if the breath itself said, but it's beautiful. A wash in amazement and filled with joy we just happened upon all these little pieces of beauty smack dab in the middle of the world, wherever we were right there along the path, something beautiful, something alive, calling us to notice it and to pay attention. Here in my kitchen, writes the poet, here in my kitchen, these flowers are amazement itself. Here among the regular things of our lives, right in the midst of a busy life, a busy world. We're asked to notice the regular beauty alongside the road, along the path, to notice the things we often pass right by, to notice heaven right in our midst. I don't know about you, but when I go on a path, I often, almost every day, need to remind myself to pay attention. So I kind of get this glazed over look, both in my eyes and my heart, of focusing on something that's completely not connected to the world around me, right? So I'm walking along the path. I don't notice a giant bouquet of flowers or a choir or a whole room of people. I'm just focused on the details of the day. 
I get sucked into the details of the day, analyzing every little detail, thinking, oh, I should have done that differently. Oh, I should have gotten to that. Why wasn't I more productive? Or, oh, I really should not have sent that email or whatever <laughs> it happens to be. And you get in this little whiplash of trying to remind yourself to notice something beyond just the analyzed details of the day. So I have this little mantra when I walk my dog. So I walk my dog along the South Sumbro River most nights, at least when the weather's decent and I don't have meetings too late or whatever the situation is. And we walk along, I have this little mantra that goes through my head, look up, look down, look all around. It's very simple and it's very helpful <laughs> and it works every time. Look up, look down, look all around. Because if you speed by life and you're so focused in the tiny little details, sometimes you can forget the larger picture that you are surrounded in. It reminds me of a mentor of mine when I was working in the summers cleaning schools as a custodial assistant for several summers in high school and college. And my mentor, in somewhat of a gruff way, would say, you know, if you mow it that fast, you're just going to scare the grass. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, Mr. Ron. He taught me a lot in a very practical way about slowing down. So more and more, I think our largest spiritual task in life is slowing down. And I've begin, begun to think that it is a spiritual practice to get distracted. Hang with me there. Think about that word itself. Distracted. Off the regular, familiar, normal, well-worn, tracked path, passageway. To get off of that a little bit, to notice what's beyond it, or what's along the side, or what's above you, to notice the sky and the earth and everything in between to notice that there is so much more because I believe the speed of the soul is much more like taffy. It just slows you down and makes you notice in a world that wants you to be much quicker like a rocket through this life. And then you just pass by the flowers, you pass by the music, you pass by community, you pass by it all if you can't slow down. Mary Oliver says this is the big question in life that the world throws at you every single day. She says, this is the question. You are alive. Do you care to make a comment? <laughs> what if you are greeted with that question each morning or each day? You are alive. Do you care to make a comment? And maybe the whole spiritual life or the ethical life or the social life or whatever life there is at all is to answer that question and say, yes, I'm alive and I care to comment or to listen. And what I know is that life is beautiful and that life is fragile and that life is short. And my deepest spiritual work is to name and notice and experience the beauty in something the world has called weeds. To name and experience and notice the beauty in what the world has cast aside as marginalized or oppressed or said is not worthy. Maybe those are words you have felt directed at yourself or people you love. And ours is a tradition that says, I will see the beauty even amongst the weeds. Now you can discern whether that includes Creeping Charlie or whether that includes Dandelions, but I think it can. I'll let the botanist correct me again after service. That's fine. But ultimately at the end of the day, the spiritual life is about casting seeds into the world, sometimes in ways you have no idea how they are gonna take root and blossom. And isn't it a miracle that you bless the future in unknown ways with beauty by what you act on or plant today. That you bless some future generation, some unknown person with beauty by whatever you're doing today. 
in ways that you can't possibly imagine. Isn't that a miracle? May it be so. Amen. In this world and in this life, you are not alone. You are here by choice, and these here are your people. This is your kindred. This is your family. Even if you have only walked in these doors for the first time today, know that you are sacred, you are welcome, and you belong. The words of benediction are entitled, The Flowers Have the Gift of Language. In the meadow, they speak of freedom, and at each tip of the branch, they cling briefly before bursting into the fruit sweet of taste. The flowers have the gift of language. They are silent messengers of hope. In the face of cruelty, they speak of courage. In the experience of ugliness, they bespeak the persistence of beauty. Speak, messengers, for we need to hear what you would say. They transport the human voice on the winds of beauty. They lift the melody of song to our ears. They paint through the eye and hand of the artist. Their fragrance binds us to the sweet-smelling earth. May the blessings of the flowers be upon you. May their beauty beckon you to each morning and their loveliness lure you to each day. May their tenderness caress you into the night. Their delicate petals make you gentle. Their eyes make you aware, their stems make you sturdy, and their reaching hold you in love. May you be blessed by their beauty and blessed by the beauty of this place. May it be so, and amen.